Hello, everybody. It's Professor Fiore once again here to say nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. All right. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about sequences. There's three kinds of sequences in Python. There are strings, tuples, and lists. So today we're going to talk about strings. And we've talked a little bit about strings already, right? Character strings, which are basically just a collection of, you know, letters. Okay? So, letters, numerals, whatever. Uh, let's say that we have a string. I'm going to call it A. I'm just going to fill it up with some letters, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like so. And what I'm going to do, just so this becomes a little bit more obvious, I am going to number their positions. So we would say that the string A starts at location 0. In other words, I'm going to have a bunch of offsets here. So 0 would be no offset at the very beginning of A. And then 2, and we go out to the final value. All right, so there's seven total characters here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So A is in position 0, B is in position 1, C is in position 2, and finally G is in position 6. Okay, now Python allows us to get substrings, or what are referred to as slices. We can get parts of these things. And we do that through an index, and the index uses square braces. So we can say the following. Let's just say we print A. All right, this is like no biggie. We should just see the A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? And there we go. Okay, no big surprise. But check this out. I'm going to say give me index 0. All right, what's at index 0? I just get the A. And if I say, you know, give me index 3, D, right? Index 3, D. Okay, that seems kind of useful. But what's, in fact, more useful is the ability to get a chunk of this. So I could say something like this, 1, colon, 4. This means start at location 1, work your way up to, but not including 4. So this should give us B, C, and D. D. All right. Remember, remember the uh, the range iterator, right? It was up to, but not including a certain value. So it's the same sort of deal. Sure enough, there's our BCD, right? Pretty cool. All right. If you leave off one of these things, I just say, you know, one colon, this will give me from that position to the end. Right, so there's B, C, D, E, F, G. Great. And what do you think will happen if we leave off the front end? Wild guesses, people. Yep, that's right. It goes everything up to, but not including, right? So it goes 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is A, B, C, D. All right. Beautiful. We're getting somewhere. Okay. Finally, well, not really finally, but in this sequence of stuff, let's say we did um, this. What do you think that's going to do? We're going to start at 1, work our way up to 5, not including 5, but we're going to jump by 2. So that's going to give us 1, 3, and of course 6 would be, excuse me, 5 would be too far. So... There we go, B and D. All right, there's your B, there's your D, positions one and three. Hey, pretty nice. We can also go from the back end, so we can do something like this, A minus one. G, right? That's the last one. And then if you said, you know, minus two, so we're counting from the back end, right? So there's minus one, minus two, minus three, so on and so forth. And you can also have these things with, um, you know, the colons. So you can do something like this. All right, so it's up to that particular one. Again, not including. It's always like not including when you do these ranges. These are called slices, right, when you do this. Um, 
So it's not including that last one. Up to, but not including. Uh, and, and we can have the second colon on here, you know, to skip around. All right, there's AC. So it's basically every other one that we had here, the AC and E. So this is, uh, this is a fairly flexible kind of thing that you can um, manipulate th these strings, get substrings. So you might have, for example, a, uh, a string that contains somebody's name, right? Their first name and their last name. And you just want to find their last name. So you could sort of scan through to find their last name and pull it out. If you knew where their last name started, you could just grab a slice from you know, the start position to the end position, so to speak, and just get their last name. The trick here would be to find where their last name is if there's a variable length first name. Well, you'd look for a separator, right? You'd look for a comma or a space or you know, whatever it was that, that uh, you had in your particular data, okay? All right, to illustrate this, we are going to pop in a little program. You ready? I have some hocus pocus here. All righty, here we go. Here's our lovely little program for the day. What I've got up here is an input statement. It's going to ask you to enter a sentence. And then what it's going to do is we're going to determine the length. In other words, how many characters are in this sentence? And that's through the len, short for length, function. So this will return how many characters are in there. So, you know, if we did this A, B, C, D, E, F, G thing, if I said, you know, what's the length of A rather than the length of S, what do you think we would get? Well, we would get um, seven because there's seven things here, right? Zero through six. Okay. Um, so in any case, L is going to be however many characters you type in. So you're going to type in a sentence. Then I'm going to have this variable called start position, start pause, start position, is going to be zero. We're going to initialize this to zero. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to scan through the sentence, character by character, looking for a space. So this is a very simple kind of thing. This is not going to be uh, particularly sophisticated. We're not going to be looking for punctuation like commas and colons and semicolons and periods and exclamation points and stuff like that. It's a very simple sort of stripped down thing, um, experimenting with this after the fact, in other words, so that it can deal with things like commas and semicolons. That's a nice little venture you might do on your own, but this is just to show you how we can do this. So in any case, we have a certain number of characters and we start up a, a little for loop here, right? Notice we say for I in range L, so for however long it is. Right? Again, using my A as an example here, we are going to get seven. So I was going to go from zero up to, but not including seven. In other words, zero to six, which are the indices into the string. Okay. So what do we do? The very first thing is we look at S I, which happens to be zero initially. And we say, is that a space? If it's not a space, don't bother. You know, it's a character. It's a, whatever it is. I don't care. It's not a space. So we don't do anything. We just come back around. And, you know, we increment I, obviously, in our for loop. And we look at the next one. You know, um, what's S1? Is that a space? If it's not, again, skip everything. Eventually, you know, we're going to get we're going to get to uh, a character that is a space. You know, maybe it's the fifth one or something. OK, so we get we get a match and we say, oh, OK, well, the end position will be whatever that is, I. OK, so. We then print out from the start position, which initially was zero, to this end position. And remember, when you do the slice, it's up to but not including this. So this will not include the space. And then we simply increment up start position. In other words, we set this up to whatever the current found space is plus one, the next character, which is actually the very next thing we're going to be looking for in the loop. So we come back around. If, it, if it's a, a non-space, you know, we skip this. We just keep on going um, until we find another space. And when we do, we have a new end position. We have the start position from last time, which was where we left off, right, after the first space we found. And we print out that word. And then we do the same thing. We reset the start position, in other words, to the end of that particular word. And off we go. So what is this actually doing? Well, it's taking the sentence that we typed in and it's printing it 
down the page, right? So that's going to go down like this rather than coming across. Sort of an interesting kind of a thing if you think about it. And then finally, when we get all done with this, when we run through, we still have the very last word. You know, assuming the sentence doesn't end with a space, and it most likely won't, um, you won't get a final match. So what we then do is we take where we left off to the end, right? Because there's no uh, there's no index here, so that's from this this position to the end, and we print that out, and that's the last word. Okay, that's the last word. Okay, so let's run this. Enter a sentence. Nobody expects the Spanish, oops, let's fix that, Spanish Inquisition. As a matter of fact, those who do expect, okay, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Our chief weapon is fear. Fear and surprise are two. Two of our weapons are fear, surprise, and a ruthless efficiency. Three! Yep, I'll come in again. There it goes. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition being printed down. Okay? So, <laughs> so you know, we can try something else. Right? What's a good sentence for us to, uh, to type in here? Our chief... No, that, let's not do that. What's a good sentence to start? What is a good sentence to put in here? What is your quest? I am king of the Britons. We are all Britons. Okay. So that's kind of a cool thing, right? Like I said, if we if we had commas in there, those commas would sort of get sucked into the word because we're not explicitly checking for them. Same thing with a colon. Okay, you know, something along that line. It's because after all, we were only looking for space. So if I said something like, I like doggies, wombats, and marmots. See, the comma gets associated with doggies and the period gets associated with marmots. So, hmm. Not maybe as sophisticated as we would like. How do we get around that? Well, I'll just give you a clue. Maybe we need to check for more than one thing here. You know, maybe a logical check, right, is what's order is is what's in order. Okay, there might be some gotchas in there. Um, so you know, if we had this other idea of names, and like I wanted to split names apart. You know, this thing doesn't know a, a sentence from a name. So you know, I could give you a name. You know. separates them out, right? Larry Smarkweather. Okay. Pretty good? I hope so. So the string just sits here, if you will, as a sort of a, you think of it as a kind of a singular unit, but we can, in fact, strip it apart through the use of this, these sequence operators, this idea of having an index, right? Right there, right here, and getting parts of it, slices of it, pieces of it. Right, substring extraction. So this is kind of the exact opposite of uh, what we did way, way, way back in the beginning where we were concatenating strings, right? We were saying like, print A plus B, right? A concatenated with B, and we could get two words and smash them together. So now we're kind of ripping them apart. It's a little bit more sophisticated because there's more to it. You know, there's more possibilities here. It's not like just taking two things and mashing them together. You know, where do you want to cut them apart? That's a much bigger sort of question. So there's a lot you can do here. I suggest that you sort of monkey with this, play around with it, see what else you can get it to do. Next time, we're going to extend our discussion from strings up to things called tuples and lists. And we'll check out the idea of a sequence that contains other sequences, right? If statements can contain if statements, Whiles can contain whiles or fours. Loops can be within loops. So there's no reason a sequence can't be inside of a sequence. We'll check that out next time.